Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number 24. Move right on. Interesting chapter. And 24, Jeremiah is the 24th book of the Bible. So getting things set up here. And talking about Jerusalem, the judgment. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste. Not COVID-19, not global warming, not El Nemo, not the plastics in the ocean, not if we cut all the trees down, God, and turns it upside down. Not the big ice, not the glacial periods. I remember when I grew up, when I was growing up as a kid, you know, there was a big threat of ice. And all this ice was going to be on the poles and the earth was going to churn. Well, now all the ice in the poles are going to melt. And I also grew up where the plastic bags were the answer to the paper bags. And now we're going back to the paper bags. And scatter abroad the inhabitants thereof. And shall be as the people, so with the priests. All right, so we're talking about the nation of Israel. There's only one true priest class of people. And that is the children of Israel. I know the Bible says Christians are priests, but, you know, we're not, you know, an office that is physical. We don't go around wearing special attire like even the priests of the Levites did and the priests of the Levites. As with the servant, so with the master. Ooh, those are bad words. Can't erase history because you don't like it. There was a master-servant relationship. And you, you seem to forget that Egypt had slaves, and they were Jewish people, and the Bible says they served with rigor. So we don't have JLM, Jewish Lives Matter. Egyptians were taking the Jewish male babies and throwing them in the ocean, the, the, the river, and killing them. More Jewish babies died than the BLM movement of cops. Let's get with history. Let's look at the facts, shall we? Servant and master, they, it, as bad as slavery is, it's there. As with the maid, so with the mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. There's two classes of people. And we're going, we have a middle class today. When the Antichrist comes, there will be no middle class under the Antichrist. There'll be those that have the mark and those that don't have the mark. As with the lender, guy gives money, so the borrower, borrower. As with the taker of usury, interest rates. So with the giver of the usury to him. There'll be two classes in the millennium. Jewish people and the nations. The land, land of Israel, Palestine, shall be utterly emptied. Utterly spoiled. For the Lord has spoken this word. <clears throat> There's coming a time after the millennium, after the devil's cast in the lake of fire, before the great white throne judgment, the earth and the heavens are going to melt with a fervent heat. Everything that is on this earth is going to go up in heat, in flames, in fire. All, and let me say, natural resources. 
All trees, water, and ores, O-R-E. And from the ores, you get gold, silver, plastics, everything. And from ore, you can have cash, cars, houses, all of it. And all the land of the earth between after the millennium and the great white throne judgment, everything on this earth will be gone, vaporized, burnt up forever. Have you got stock in an idol or image? It's going to burn up. Have you got stock in a career? It's going to be gone. Money, gone. A god's small G-O-D-A, be in the lake of fire that burns forever. The land shall be utterly emptied, utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word, and God has spoken it, it's going to happen. The earth mourneth. It fadeth away. The earth, the planet, Mother Earth, going to burn. See, the devil teaches man, it came in with the Big Bang. No, the Big Bang ends the earth. It didn't come. The earth came by God. And is going out with a fervent heat. The Big Bang is later. The world. Now, the earth is the planet, the, what we walk and swim in. You know, we either walk or swim on the earth. There's nothing else. The world, that's the people. For God so loved the world. It's not that God loved the earth. The people, for God so loved the world that he gave. The world languishes. The people languish. That's the first time that word shows up. And fadeth away. All human beings will be gone one day. At the rapture, the saved people go, the Christians, the children of God. At the second advent, the wicked nations will be cast off into hell. At the end of the millennium, every person is going to be gathered. Every dead body will rise. The Christians' bodies have already risen. The haughty people, the prideful people of the earth do language. It's all gone. Where is my, where's my gold? Where's my gods? Where's my U-Haul? Where's my money? Where's my wallets? Where's my furs? Where's the whales? Where's the manatees? Where's my office? Where's my... Gone. You know, everything that is done for Jesus Christ, that's what's going to last. And people say, well, there's you can't take it with you. There's certain things you can take to heaven. Now don't go so far. You, know, you can't take nothing with you. You can take things with you to heaven. Gold, silver, precious stones, and lost souls for Jesus Christ. Again, you got one of those nice little sayings. It sounds so cute and pretty that you can put on the thing and sell stupid people. Whatever you've done for Jesus Christ will last, will survive the burning of the earth and heavens and all that. And will pass through the fire of the judgment seat of Christ. Everything else for the Christian that's not done for Jesus Christ is going to go through the fire. It's going to burn up his wood, hay, and stubble. You see, the Christians will get a burning before the earth burns. And everything done for self and whatever other reasons other than Jesus, wood, hay, or stubble burns up already. That's it. Everything for Jesus, gold, silver, and precious stone. Crowns, rewards, and inheritance. The earth, everything for the earth, the unsaved people, will be in utter destruction between the end of the millennium and the great white throne judgment. Or presently at death of a person. The moment a saved Christian is at the judgment seat of Christ. And walks away from the judgment seat of Christ. 
And if he has no gold, silver, and precious stone, that's it. His whole life has been wasted. He walks around having no crowns, no rewards, no inheritance. That's it. And a Christian that has gold, silver, and precious stone walks away from that. It, how can you say everything's going to burn up? Everything You can't take it with you. When you walk away from the judgment seat of Christ, you've got gold, silver, and precious stones, an inheritance, a crown, a reward. Christian. A, a, a human being lost dies. That's it. It's all gone. It, you don't take that with you. You can't take nothing with you. You take your dying soul into hell. How about that man that Jesus told us, the rich man in hell? What, well, what did he take with him in hell? I got five brethren. Please. He took his memories. That, that rich man in hell. What did he take with him? Father Abraham? Tell Lazarus to do this for me. That rich man took with him into hell. I am a master. You tell that servant to do that. That rich man took into hell is what he believed his authority. That rich man was ordering Abraham, the father of the Jews, tell Lazarus to do it. Tell Lazarus, give me fear. Send him to go to my family. And memory. And a lost man in hell brings his eyes, his tongue, his fingers, his soul. No, earth, no earthly, worldly goods. So you go, oh, you can't bring nothing with you. Okay, I just go right in the grave. That's it. Nothing. No, that ain't the truth either. The earth also is defiled. It's been cursed by Adam. Genesis 3. The earth is also defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Mrs. Adam. What has defiled the earth is not pollution. It's sin. The rebellion against the word of God. Adam, do not eat of that fruit of the tree of knowledge you're going to eat evil. Adam ate of that fruit, and that's when it's not called pollution, it's called defiled. Adam and Eve, well, she wasn't named Eve yet. Adam and the woman transgressed the word of God. That's what brought the defile. That's what brought pollution. That's what brought hospitals. That's what brought death. Because they have transgressed the laws. Well, I'm not under the law. Then why is it everything in the Ten Commandments Paul brought back into the church except for the Sabbath? He said, well, I have not known coveting unless I have known lust. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6, honor your father and mother. Paul writes, we ought not have fornication. Definitely ought not to have adultery. Paul says, I, I have learned to be content. I didn't covet. I mean, the law can't save us, but man, the law showed us, the Bible says, the schoolmaster. It showed me I was a sinner. I don't take you to Romans Road. I take you to the law to show you who you are as a sinner. I will show. All right, all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. All right, have you ever been? Have you ever been the most perfect child ever? Oh no. You mean you did something wrong to your parents? Well, yeah. Bible says honor thy father and mother. Did you completely honor your father and mother your entire life? Well, no, and you're a sinner. Let me ask you another question: Have you ever taken anything that was not yours or never asked for? Yeah. Thou shalt not steal. Have you ever told a lie such as, <coughs> I must, <coughs> can't come to work <coughs> today because I'm sick, and you weren't sick? Oh, well, yeah. Thou shalt not bear false witness. You're a sinner. I've only had one person my entire life every time, oh, I'm not, after all, I'm not a sinner. And you're a fool. The law would bring us to Calvary and say, hey, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I'm going to hell. Romans Road don't have that. Find me Roman. Find me in the Romans Road where hell. Find me in the Romans Road the gospel. 
that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to Scripture, was buried, rose again the third day according. That's the gospel. I know Romans Road shows you that Jesus Christ arose from the grave, or died, I think it was one, but Romans Road only has one third of the gospel. Jesus had preached the gospel. Naughty, naughty, naughty duty that you gave a third of the gospel, not the complete gospel. And a complete, not having the complete gospel, a third of the, it's not the gospel. I mean, if you got a recipe and all the ingredients you laid out on the table and say, you know what? I'm not going to put that in the recipe. It's not going to come out to what you thought it would be. Try, well, I'm going to make mashed potatoes for dinner. And try, just leave out the potatoes and see how well you do. So, the earth is defiled under inhabitants because they have transgressed. As a Christian, live a proper Christian life. i got to know what the laws are because the laws tell me what God approves of and what God doesn't approve of. Because I had a lot of people out there, well, I'm a Christian, so I, so I put marks on my skin and all that. God said not to. Well, I'm a Christian, I got long hair, I'm a male. God, God said, that's a shame. Well, you know, I'm a Christian and I'm shacking up, I'm committing fornication. God said, no. And changes the ordinance. We change the ordinance of God. We had made sodomy. We had changed it from an abomination to, all right, it's allowed, it's approved, you can get married. Romans chapter 1. And broken the everlasting covenant of nature. That's why the world's all a mess. Therefore, has the curse devoured the earth? Look at Malachi chapter 4, verse 6. Malachi chapter 4, verse 6. As you turn it, can I tell you Malachi is in the Old Testament? Robbers of God, Old Testament. Malachi 4, 6, And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And that closes the Old Testament. The Old Testament closes with, in our Bible, closes with, with a curse. Now the Jewish Bible closes with, get back to Jerusalem. And Jesus Christ came and lived the fullness of the perfect law that he lived, sinless, and died on the tree that became a curse for us. And they that dwell therein are desolate, alone. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned. And in the, in the tribulation period, there's a time of burning. And there are people who have lived on this planet Earth. Itchy, sorry. They're burning in hell. And a few men left. And that shortage of men runs through the Bible a period of time in the tribulation period. There's a shortage of men. I take down to verse 7 down to 12 and we'll stop. I thought it was a good place to stop. The new wine. What's the new wine? You go out to the venue, you pick the grapes. You squeeze the grapes. New wine. When we had our church in Norwich, Connecticut, we tried to start. start, And we had the nights where we had the Lord's Supper. My wife would take, would go to, the, we'd go to the store and get grapes. And we would put the grapes in a juicer. And that was... That was our that was our Lord's wine. 
That was new wine, fresh, right from the grape. The new wine morning. It's sad. The vine languishes, <laughs> almost like what the earth is going to be. All the merry hearted do sigh. Oh. No joy. When the time of making wine and the harvest for Israel, especially, it's a time of celebration, it's a time of feasting, it's a time of, of, of dancing, it's a time of music. Hallelujah, glory to God, God blessed us. <coughs> the mirth of Tabret ceases, the music. The noise of them that rejoice ended. And the joy of the heart seat, the music is stopped. They shall not drink wine with a song. And as far as I remember, every time I went to a bar, tavern, there's always a jukebox, and there was always music to be played. Not now. The wine in the song is stopped. Strong drink, out, strong alcohol, shall be bitter to them that drink it. <coughs> that sure ain't today. The city of confusion. Babel? You do know what Babel means, don't you? I mean, you allow the, the Babel gods, the Babylonian gods into your church. Do you know what Babel means? You know where it came from? And we have to press one for English? You do know your Bible. You do know history, don't you? You do know we are looking to the tribulation period. You, <coughs> you do know in the tribulation that there is one main city. And you know that the world's already prepared for the holidays of that city. I mean, when they kill the two prophets of the Lord, they're going to give out gifts and merrymaking. But in the tribulation period, there's going to be water shortage. Blood instead of water. It's going to be extreme heat. It's going to be animal crazy. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up. COVID-19. COVID-19 is preparing you for the tribulation period. Better get right with God. You think COVID-19 is bad? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And when the church is raptured, you won't have the worst COVID-19 restrictions and isolation. Do you realize during COVID-19, not so in America, but there were nations in Europe and throughout the world that no one went anywhere. No one did anything. They actually spent their time home. COVID-19 and what has been happening with COVID-19 is a prelude to what's going to happen in the tribulation period. And one day, instead of getting a shot for, for, for uh, the flu, you'll be getting a shot for the mark. Now, a lot of Christians got that mixed up right now. And no man may come in. Why can't they come in? Because the houses are shut up because you can't go out. If you go out, they're going to see you. You're going to get arrested. There's a crying for wine in the streets. Why? Because verse 7, verse 8, there's no vineyard production. 
the vineyards have been shut down. You can't go to work. Sound familiar? And you can't bring the grapes in because there's no work. Everybody's indoors. Can't go out. And the grapes can't make it to to the uh, to the press. And if it made it to the press, there's no one to press the, the wine and all because there's no work because everybody's in their house because they're isolated. And when there's no press, you can't make the wine, you can't make the new wine, you can't have the drinks because, man, COVID-19 has opened up great values in the Bible. It's a prelude. And you can't go out of your house, you can't go buy it, you can't go. You say, well, I'll just call up and I'll have it delivered. Not if every house is shut. And there may come a day <coughs> after the church is raptured during the tribulation period. It may, in order for them to deliver, it may be the government will have to deliver it. And if the government under any crisis is going to deliver, you better have the mark. And if you don't have the mark or the number of the, of the beast in your forehead or your right arm, they ain't going to deliver stuff to your house. They're going to take you out of your house and turn you into the government. The mirth of the land is gone. The celebrations, the song, the excitement of the land is gone. Why? Because here is this man, the devil incarnate, the man of sin, and his natural enemy is worse than Adolf Hitler. He is out to kill the Jews and anybody who won't worship his image. He's not going to allow celebration. He don't want you to have a good time. And then with all the plagues, the, the, the seals, the, the vials, and the trumpets, and the woes, you're not going to want to party and have a good time. There's one point in time that, 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 that there's a bite from the tail of an animal that you're going to wish you would have died. I think it's three or six months, I forget what. And you're not going to be able to die. <clears throat> excruciating pain another point in the tribulation period says that God's going to have the sun scorch even the antichrist's seat and they're still going to blaspheme God that don't sound like a celebration to me in the city that would be usually Jerusalem there's one city above cities in the Bible it's Jerusalem Or a city of confusion, Babel or Babylon. Is left desolation. And the gates is smitten with destruction. So here's a city. And there are people and there are things going on. And there's this desolation. Something has come into the city to cause destruction. And the outpouring... was there's no wine there's no thing and i don't know if i'm going to find this real quick uh, go to jeremiah jeremiah i'll give it a, see if i can find it but i don't know is in prison and they come and take the city all right I'm getting closer I'm getting closer jeremiah all right jeremiah found the area i want yeah I can find what I'm looking for now. Babylon has come into the land and they've taken over Judah. And let me 
sí, de compadre. Sí. Search this out. I did not have this today, but it just came to my mind right now. And All right, Jeremiah. All right, Jeremiah 52. That's what I want right there. Babylon has come and dis destroyed. Okay. Now, in complete opposition to what we're reading in Isaiah, in Jeremiah 52, the city's been taken. The temple's been destroyed. And we lead up to chapter 52, verse 17. No, 16. But ne Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard, this guy in charge of the military campaign, campaign, left certain of the poor of the land to be vine dressers and for husbandmen. All right, Babylon's come and conquered Judah. And here's the captain of the Babylonian army said, you know, those poor people there, let them take care of the vineyards. Let them grow the gardens, the husbandmen's gardens and all that. So at the Babylon captivity in, in Judah, they're still making wine. There's the vineyards. They're still picking grapes. Now, they may not be as happy as they were, but there, there's the wine. When we come back to Isaiah, there's a period of time. There is no harvesting of grapes. Seven, eight, nine. They want wine and all that. Again, in, in the time of Jeremiah and Ezekiel, in the captivity, there was no singing in joy. <coughs> but there were still vine dressers. There's coming a time that none that would be the, that would be the tribulation period with the with the, the trumpets, the seals, the vials, and the woes of God and the man of sin and what he's doing. And the city of Jerusalem would be vacated because if you're a Jew walking around, you're not safe. In Revelation chapter 12, God gives the woman wings, a place prepared for her. 